So, then I um, think we are ready to start uh, this lecture and uh, today I will first finalize the curriculum in this course. Uh, we started last week on uh, chapter 8 about uh, operations uh, scheduling and uh, we still have a, a few small topics left on, uh, on that. But uh, uh, we'll probably take half an hour or something and then I will start presenting the solution for assignment uh, number 3. Um, and then next week, next uh, Wednesday, will be the last lecture in the course, and then I will present the exam from, uh, from last year. Uh, so uh, I hope you have time. You should at least try to solve the problems yourself first. I haven't uh, uploaded uh, a solution for that exam yet, but I will uh, upload uh, that one in front there just after the lecture next week. Uh, and then you have, of course, you are aware of the exam, which is quite early, uh, Monday the 1st of, uh, uh, of December. So you have less than two weeks to, to prepare. Uh, and of course, if you have any, uh, any questions or uh, want something to be repeated, uh, uh, you can just contact me and uh, I will try to find time for that on, on the last lecture uh, next week. So let's now first uh, try to repeat something about uh, this operation scheduling. Um, show this uh, figure here because this is the hierarchy of the uh, decision and this will also in some way summarize uh, the curriculum on this course and also the content of the textbook because we start with a forecast try to get uh, find, uh, find out how much will the demand be for uh, the future, uh, look at different uh, techniques for forecasting. Uh, and when we have a forecast, we can start by putting up an aggregate plan, try to maybe combine different similar products as we saw in, in chapter uh, three. Um, and uh, we also looked at the different ways of, uh, uh, of uh, putting up a production plan. Uh, then, when we have the master production schedule, try to schedule out the production quantities by product and also on the time periods. Uh, then look at the material requirements planning, explode the master schedule to obtain requirements for components and final products like we saw in uh, the first part of chapter seven, which was also presented last week. And then at the end, at the bottom of this hierarchy, we should look at the detailed job shop schedule uh, and try to meet specification of production quantities from the MRP system, which is the, the previous uh, uh, part here. So here we can find the, uh, the detailed uh, MRP and, and plan and uh, then we should try to fix up uh, a plan for uh, producing at the shop floor. Uh, we also looked at um, different uh, objectives here. Uh, and we, will, uh, we also looked at different uh, uh, techniques uh, and uh, well here at the, uh, in this field there is no not necessary one optimal solution because it will depend on what is the most important objective and sometimes meeting the due date as good as possible is the what you will prioritize uh, but other, uh, other situations there might be other objective which is more important or eventually equally uh, important so often you have objectives that can be conflicting it's not possible to get a feasible plan for meeting the due date and minimizing the average flow time, for example. So you have to choose what is the most important objective in this particular uh, situation. And uh, we also looked at the terminology, different uh, uh, well, terminology uh, here. We, have, we looked at the flow shop, difference between the flow shop and the job shop. Uh, we are focusing on the job shop problem. A flow shop is uh, when you are processing a given number of jobs through several machines at the same sequence. So you have to follow the same sequence all the time. While on the job shop problem, you can uh, sequence the jobs through the machine in different, uh, uh, in different orders. And uh, we are, well, 
just looking at the, the simple job shop problem where you have actually only one machine. So in other courses, at least on master level, you will also uh, have, uh, have techniques for sequencing when you have several machines, which of course makes it a bit more, more complex. Uh, well, we talked about parallel processing and sequential. Uh, you can do it in, in parallel or you have to do it in, in, in a sequence. Uh, the term flow time of one particular job is uh, used uh, as a quite common measure of when comparing the different techniques. And the flow time means the time from you initiate the first job in the plan until this particular job is finished. And we saw one technique which uh, had uh, the mo uh, well, uh, was able to, to optimize regarding the objective of uh, uh, of uh, minimizing the average or, to uh, or sum of the, the flow time, which means that you should finish all jobs as soon as possible. And this is one of the, mm, one of the, the measures which also is used uh, together to, to compare different, uh, uh, different uh, sequences and different plans. Uh, make span is the flow time of the job completed last. So when you have a given number of jobs, you will have a make span, which is the, uh, the, the end of the last job in the plan. And when you have only one machine and you have to, uh, you have to um, well do the jobs in, in sequence, the make span will always be the same, independent of the sequence, because you have a given time to use for each of the different jobs. Uh, we talked about the difference between the tardiness and the lateness. The tardiness is the most common measure, which means that the positive difference between the completion time and the due date, the number of days or number of hours or eventually, uh, how, how much this job is delayed. Then we talk about tardiness, and the tardiness can never be negative. So if the job is finished in time or before time, the tardiness will always be zero. And that's the difference between the tardiness and the lateness, because the lateness is, per definition, can also be negative. So then uh, the lateness, if you are finished with a job before the due, uh, due date, then the lateness will be negative. But usually we only look at the tardiness, which is the measure of how much delayed one job uh, are in one particular plan. Uh, and then last time we looked at different sequencing rules. We have the, well, the FCFS, the first come, first served rule, uh, which is considered to be a fair rule. It seems to be fair to, to explain for everyone, okay, that customer was first and we have to uh, do the, this particular job before uh, the others. But that's not always the most effective rule. So we also looked at the shortest processing time which is, uh, means that you should finalize the job with the shortest processing time first and then wait with the longer job until later in, in the sequence. And this sequence will give us an optimal, uh, or this, uh, this strategy will give us an optimal sequence if the major objective is to, uh, uh, is to minimize the total or the, the average flow time. Finish all small jobs as soon as possible and get them out of the system. Uh, and we also looked at the earliest due date strategy where you sequence the job according to the due date and uh, then you will have an optimal sequence uh, when the major objective is to minimize the maximum tardiness, to minimize the maximum delay. So you realize that you, some jobs need to be delayed, but you will minimize the maximum delayed uh, as much as possible. And then you should use this strategy. And we saw the critical ratio, which, which is some kind of uh, uh, well, combination of the two shortest processing time and earliest due date. Um, here, find the ratio of the processing time and the remaining time until the due date and schedule the job with the largest critical ratio uh, next. Or eventually the smallest one, it depends on what you divide on what. Uh, so this is not optimal according to any objective, but it, it will be uh, some, somewhere between and uh, try to consider both the processing time and, and the due date. And we looked at Moore's algorithm. 
where the major objective is to minimize the number of tardy jobs, the number of delayed jobs. If we uh, want to have as many jobs as possible finished within the due date, then use this one. But then you still will have some tardy jobs, some jobs which is delayed, but uh, the, uh, that number will be minimized. Uh, and at last, today I will now present Lawler's algorithm, where, you mi uh, where the objective is to minimize the maximum flow time. This means this, this objective is the same as with the earliest due date. The delay should be as small as possible for any job. And subject to some precedence constraint. Precedence means that you need to finalize some jobs before you can start on the others. Uh, so, the main idea behind this Lawler's algorithm is to that uh, while certain jobs must be completed for some others can begin, and we will try to schedule the selected job to be completed last, so we will look at the different jobs available and pick the one who should be last in the sequence. And then we should look at the remaining jobs and pick the one who should be second last and so on. So we start from the end of the sequence and go to the start of, uh, of, of the sequence. Uh, in short, we, we, this means that when you should schedule the last job in the remaining sequence and choose the available job with the highest due date. And I will try to, uh, to show this with, uh, with an example, which is always much easier to, to explain. So here I will use an example from the textbook. And we have six different jobs. And we have a precedence that say that job number one needs to be finalized before job number two. And job number two needs to be finished before we can start on job number three. And in addition, we have a job number four, which is independent of the three first. But this job needs to be finished before both number five and number six. So this is now the precedence uh, diagram for this example. These two groups are independent. And here we know that four must be finished before five and six, but these two are independent of each other. So the uh, sequence of these two uh, is not, uh, not important. So in this example, we also have uh, well, a given processing time and a given due date. And uh, well, we can try to put up a very simple strategy here. One, two, three, four, five, six, which is certainly a feasible strategy. It will uh, meet all these constraints about precedence, but not necessarily the optimal strategy. But let's now try to look at this one. We have job one, two, three, four, five, and six. Uh, we have a given processing time here, which is uh, 2, 3, 4, 3, 2, 1. And each of these jobs has a due date when they should be finished, uh, which is 3, 6, 9, 7, 11, 7 for each job in sequence. Three, six, nine, seven, eleven, and again seven. What we now can start with uh, looking at is uh, uh, the make span, which means how much time do we need to finalize all these six jobs? Okay, the make span will be the sum of the processing time, independent of the sequence we will be finished after 5, 9, 12, 14, 15 days. So the make span in this case is 15. We will use 15 days to finalize all these six jobs. And then we should now try to find a sequence which 
uh, meet the constraint about precedence and in addition will minimize the maximum delay which is the uh, well the objective for Lawler's algorithm and of course if we didn't have this um, this precedence constraint then we should use the earliest due date sort according to this and then have the sequence three two uh, yeah, one of these, four or six, and then three uh, and five. Then you will have the sequence of these jobs, which, uh, uh, which will uh, minimize the maximum delay. But this will not be a feasible strategy because it will not meet the, cons the constraint about the precedence here. Uh, but as we have seen, this sequence, the first come first serve sequence, will actually be a feasible strategy here. So we can just look at this one. First, find the completion time, which means that if we first finalize job number one, it will be used two days. Job number two will use three more days. Job number three will use four more days. Job four finished on day 12, job 5 on day 14, and job 6 in day 15. We can now find the sum of the flow time. We remember that the flow time is the, the number of, uh, of days before, uh, from we start the sequence until the job is finished. So the flow time for job number 1 is 2, the flow time for job number 2 is 5, and so on. So if we sum all this, we will get a total of 57. And if you look at the tardiness, the delay, we can see that this job is finished in time. This job is finished in time. This job is also finished in time on day 9. But here, job number 4 should it be here, uh, is finished on day 12, but it should be finished on day 7. So this job will be five days delayed. Here we compare 14 to 11, so this is three days delayed. And 15 and 7 means that this job is eight days delayed. This is a total of 16. Uh, and even if this is the, a feasible sequence, there is possible to find another sequence which will be better according to minimizing the maximum delay. We can now look at the, uh, well, the, the measures we usually uh, have, the mean flow time will then be 57 divided by the number of jobs. 57 divided by 6 is 9.5. Uh, the average tardiness will be 16 divided by 6. 2.67 and the number of tardy jobs one two three three jobs are delayed and in addition we look at the uh, maximum tardiness which here is eight so we have one job which is eight days delayed and in particular for this, uh, this objective, if, the, if we want to m uh, minimize the maximum tardiness, the maximum delay, we should rather find another sequence. So let's now remember all these measures here and try to use Lawler's algorithm to make another sequence, who hopefully will be better according to at least this particular objective. <coughs> so let's keep this and now we want to find another sequence and as I mentioned the Lawler's algorithm will start at the end so first we have to choose the job to be finalized at last in this sequence uh, we now also that we have three alternative candidates because as the last job we cannot use job number one because this needs to be finished before two and three we cannot use number two 
but number three is a potential candidate. Uh, and also here, job number five and six are potential candidate, but number four cannot be at the end of the sequence. So let's now look at the different candidates. We know that the flow time, now the, the make span is 15. So the last job will be finished on day 15. So we have now candidates. Number three, number five, and number six. And we can now say that the tau, the Greek letter tau, will now be the denotation for the make span. So this is now 15. And this means Lawler's algorithm, we should choose the job with the smallest delay in this position. So we want to choose the minimum of, well, if the last job is finished by day 15, job number three in this position would be delayed 15 minus nine, six days. Job number five, would be delayed 15 minus 11, which is four days. And job number six would be delayed 15 minus seven, which is eight days. And we should now choose the job which uh, with the smallest delay, which in this case is job number five. Job number five in the last position will be four days delayed. So job number five should now be here. And then we can look at the precedence diagram and just cross this out. Okay, now we have found job number six in the sequence. And then we should continue and choose the job which uh, should be positioned at the uh, at position number five, before job number five. Well, we have now two candidates. We have job number three and job number six. None of the other jobs are possible in this position because they need to be finished before any of the uh, other jobs. So then let's now update the current tau value, the current make span of the remaining jobs. And then we know that job number five would use two days, and then the make span of the remaining job will be 15 minus two, which is 13. Then let's look at the candidates, which is job three and six, and we choose the minimum of job number three, finished by day 13, which it will be in this position, minus the due date of nine, and job number six, which will be 13 minus seven days delayed if it is positioned at that place. And here we can clearly see that 13 minus, minus 9 is 4, 13 minus 7 is 6. So we should choose job number 3, which will be delayed 3 days at this position. And then cross out this one and continue. Next tau value will then be 13 minus the processing time for the chosen job, which is four, which means that the current make span will be nine. The, the make span, the time used to finalize the remaining four jobs will be nine days. Now we have candidates. Well, number six is still a candidate. And number two is now a potential candidate. Question? Uh, just one question. Why do you use the, the number three there, and then you, you use 13 minus four? Uh, number three yeah. 
here. Well, job number three uh, was th you had two candidates here. Th oh, num okay. Number three, okay. yeah, number three and number six, which is the potential candidates for that position. Okay. Uh, and then we'll find the delay for each of them if they are placed there and choose the smallest one. So now we are at the tau value of 9 uh, and this value should now be compared with the uh, due date of the available jobs which is number 2 and number 6. So the candidates are 2 and 6. Job number 2 will now be eventually 9 minus 6, which is the due date for that job, days delayed. And job number 6 has a due date of 7, so 9 minus 7. And here we can see that, well, job number 6 will be 2 days delayed and job number 2 will be 3 days delayed. So we should choose the smallest number, which is job number 6. Job number six will now be in this position. Uh, we have still three more jobs left. And the tau value will now be nine minus the processing time for job number six, which is one. Then we have a make span of eight. We have the potential candidates of job number two and job number four. And we will choose the minimum of 8 minus uh, 6, which is the due date of job number 2, and 8 minus 7, which is the due date of day number 4. And then, of course, 8 minus 7 is 1. So we should choose job number four in this position here. Uh, then we can cross out this one and then it should be rather easy because we have only one candidate. And when we have chosen candidate two, we have only one candidate left. So the sequence here using Lawler's algorithm will be one, two, four, six, three, and five which is a different sequence than the first come, first served uh, sequence. And we can try to look at the different measures for this, uh, for this sequence. Uh, then let's look at, uh, uh, look at the completion time here or the flow time, job number one will use two days, job number two will use three more days, job number four will use three more days, job number six will use one more day, job number three will use four days, and job number five will use two days. And we might remember the numbers here, 15, 13, 9, and 8, because this was the make span we calculated, the tau values we found when selecting each of, of these possible jobs. So here we can find that the, um, the, comp the, the sum of the, the total or the sum of the flow time will be 52. We can also find the tardiness, which now means that this job is within time, this job is within time. Job number four, well, it should be finished by seven or it is finished by eight, so this is one day left, uh, one day late. Uh, job number six, compare nine to seven, this is two days late. Job number three, compare 13 to nine, it is four days. And job number five, 15 compared to 11 will be four days. Total 
of 11. And if we now find the average or the mean flow time, we know that the mean flow time here will be 52 divided by 6, which is 8.7. The average tardiness will be 11 divided by 6, which is 1.8. The number of tardy jobs, it is 1, 2, 3, 4. So 4 jobs are delayed. And the maximum tardiness is 4. So here we can see, if we remember the uh, first come, first served uh, uh, strategy, we are better in the mean flow time, average tardiness, and of course the maximum tardiness. But we have one more delayed job. Here we have four jobs, which is uh, four jobs which are delayed, and in the previous sequence we had only three. But of course, looking at these numbers here, we can see that they are not so much delayed. So. Here we assume that we can accept a small delay, but it will be harder to get acceptance for a larger delay, so that's why we are using this strategy. And as mentioned, the Lawler's algorithm will minimize the maximum uh, flow time and also actually the, the maximum tardiness, of course, uh, subject to the precedence uh, uh, constraints, which is shown here. Uh, I have one more example on this, which I will go quite fast through. This is on uh, page 435, which might be uh, a problem recognized by you. Question? Uh, one question. Um, why did you choose uh, four instead of two? Um, because the same time is three on both ends. Uh, four instead of two. Uh, to, well, we looked at the, uh, the the tardiness at that point, and four had a due date of seven, but two had a due date of six. So the, the, we had uh, actually the make span at this position uh, was eight, and we looked at these two and found out that number four would be one day late, but number two would be two days late at that position. So then we choose the smallest delay. So th that's what we, we are doing all the time. Find a job with the smallest delay at that particular position. Uh, so let's go to a problem which might be familiar because uh, uh, here uh, on page uh, 435, problem number seven, we have, what they say, a lazy MBA student suddenly realized that he has done nothing on seven different homework assignments and projects that are due in various courses. And he estimates the time required to complete each project in this and also notes their due dates. And here, we, of course, we assume that the due dates are not, uh, not explicit, so the, uh, it is accepted with, with a delay. Of course, otherwise it would not give any much sense. Uh, and let's now try to summarize this because now we are, uh, well, we are given the date of 1st of May. We are given the due dates for seven jobs and we can see that one job, job number one, is already overdue. It should be finished by the 20th of April and this is then already delayed. So let's put up a table again of these seven jobs. We have... Uh, Job number one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And the processing time first is given to be four, eight, ten, four, three, seven, and fourteen. A total of fifty. So from the first of May. This student needs 50 days to finalize all these seven jobs. Uh, and looking at the due dates, we can also find 
compared to the 1st of July, that job number one is already minus 11 days overdue. Job number two should be finished in 16 days. Three, 27. Four, 27. Uh, five, 11. Six on day number six. And seven on day number 14. So here we have now the due dates given in uh, days from the current date. And then on the next page we are given some precedence because here, because the project one, three, and five are from the same class, he decided to do this in the sequence they are due. One, three, and five. And one should already be finished. Three has a due date of 27 and five has a due date of 11. This means the precedence here will be one before job number five, before job number three. And in addition, uh, project number seven requires result from project two and three. So this has to be done after job two and three. Three is here. Two is independent on the first here, but both these jobs needs to be finished before job number seven. And then, well, we still have a few more jobs here, which is not dependent on any of the others. It is job number four and six, which can be, uh, well, uh, it, it will not have any precedence compared to any of the other jobs. So now, looking at this precedence diagram, we should use uh, Lawler's algorithm to try to find a schedule. And as mentioned, we should start with the last job in the sequence. And we now have a make span of 50. Tau is equal to 50. We have potential jobs at the end of the sequence. Well, number seven is one alternative. Number four is another alternative. And number six is another alternative. So we don't actually have to well write the lines here, but we can look at the due date on these three jobs and choose the job with the latest due date. Alternatives four, six, and seven. 4, 6, and 7. And of course, job number 4 is the one which will be least delayed when positioned at last in the sequence. So we should choose job number 4 here. And then we remove job number 4. We look at the, uh, the current make span value excluded job number four. We know this one will use four days, then the updated tau value will be 46, which is 50 minus four. Then look at the alternative jobs for the next uh, second last position. No, the alternatives are only six and seven. We know that number six would uh, would be, uh, uh, well, six, it would be, uh, at this position, it would be 46 minus six, 40 days late. And job number seven will be 46 minus 14, which is 32 days late. Then we should choose job number seven in this position. Cross out number seven here. Update the tau value, job seven will use 14 days. And then the current tau value will be 46 minus 14, which is 32. At the next position, compare. Now job number two, three, and six are the potential alternatives. Compare the due dates, two, three, and six. And here we can see that job number three is the one with the highest due date, which will give a smallest delay at this position. So this is now placed here. Uh, job number three, 
crossed out. Now we update the make span of the remaining job, which is 32 minus 10 days for job number 3. It will be 22. Compare jobs. Now 5 is a potential alternative, 2 and 6. 5, 2, and 6. And here job number 2 is the one with the latest due date, which will give a smallest delay. So job number 2 will be at this position. Job number 2 will use 8 days. Make span will now be 14. Job number 2 is crossed out. Alternative jobs are now either 5 or 6. Job number 5 and 6. And here job number 5 is the one who will be least delayed at this position. Um, and job number 5 will use 3 days. And then the make span is 11. Cross out number 5. Alternatives 1 and 6. And comparing this due dates, number 6 should be finished by day 6, but number 1 is already delayed, has a negative value, which means that we should of course choose job number 6 here and have job number 1 first. So this is now the sequence of these jobs or these assignments in different courses, as in, in this example, which should be used to minimize the maximum uh, delay and also consider the precedence shown here. Okay, then we'll take 15 minutes break. That was actually the last part of the curriculum. So uh, then I will present for the remaining part of this lecture, I will present the solution for assignment number three.